In Google, search for Quick Capture and click on the first option. This will take you to the ArcGIS Quick Capture Overview page. You simply want to go to Launch Quick Capture on the top ribbon. Because I've already logged into ArcGIS Online, it automatically logs me into ArcGIS Quick Capture. However, if I wasn't logged into ArcGIS Online, it would prompt me to log in using my normal credentials. From here, you need to collect New Project. And we want to start from existing layers because we've created layers specific to the data we wish to collect. You need to find the feature layer that you created, the one that I created, as you can see up here, Training Tutorial QC. I want to select that. <clears throat> I want to ensure that the checkbox is on for Create Buttons from Layer Symbology because we did spend time setting the symbology. I'm going to click Next. I need to create a title. So I'm going to write Quick Capture Form. Make sure that your email is correct in case you need to recover your data and save it in an appropriate folder if you have a specific folder in mind. Click Create once you're happy and it will begin to create the project. And as you see here, it is displaying uh, an iPhone 6, 7 and 8 view of the data collection form that uh, students or that data collectors will see. Because we're about to work um, with this form and just make sure it's what we want it to be, I usually change it to something like an iPad view just so I can clearly see everything as I go. But before we save it, we, wanna, we do want to check back on the iPhone view and make sure we're happy with what it looks like. To begin customizing the appearance and function of each button, we simply need to click on the button to bring up some extra features. However, in order to save some time, we can select multiple buttons at once. For instance, I'm going to click sh hold shift down on my keyboard and I can click all of my park amenities. I'm going to make their symbol, uh, their button sizes smaller and I'm going to give them softer corners. I'm happy with the fill as white but I do want to give them a black border too. I'm going to repeat this process as well with paths, holding shift down, making it smaller, giving them softer corners and giving them a border. And lastly, repeating the process again for my fields, courts and grassed areas. Now the reason I've made each of the buttons smaller is because I want it to be user friendly when students are working on a phone. So let's go back and check the phone view. iPhone 6 and 7 have the smallest screen, so let's check that. And it looks good. We notice that our icons all fit on the phone screen without us needing to scroll. I will point out that I need to change um, the title of this because it no longer fitted. I'll show you what I mean. Playing fields and ovals was what it originally was and you can see how it's cut off there. So I needed to shorten the name so that students still got the gist but so that it was nice and clear for them too. And you'll notice that I've done that with walking path. It's now walk path too. So we've, uh, we've customized the appearance of our um, buttons but we need we can also customize the function. So again, I'm going to click, I like to work in groupings. I'm going to click um, shift and hold down so that I can select all of my park amenities. I'm going to go over to data and I want my students, my data collectors to be able to take photos of the objects they're mapping. So I'm going to enable that and you'll notice that a camera icon appears in the top left corner of each button. Now at the moment, it's automatically required you would need to make a decision as to whether you wanted um, a photo to be required for each data point mapped or whether you only wanted a photo taken if there was something significant that needed to be uh, a photo needed to be taken of. For instance, maybe the restrooms were locked or the bubbler didn't um, actually release any water. You might take a photo so that users or that people that visit the park can um, know that, hey, that's a bit of an issue with the park. You can also hide the camera preview. And what that means is usually when I would, if I was to leave it as it is and I go out into the field and click Park Gym, it would prompt me with the camera view 
and I would face my camera in the appropriate direction and take a photo of that park gym. By clicking hide camera preview, we don't actually see that camera view come up. It means that as soon as a student presses park gym, park gym and goes to map it, it'll automatically take a photo this, at the same time. So if you choose hide camera preview, you would need to make sure that your students knew that they needed to have their camera facing the item that they were mapping at the time they mapped it. Um, another function that we can look at is, in, sorry, under the data tab as well, is you might remember we created a notes field earlier. We can actually prompt users to um, add notes to the items that they're mapping. However, we can't unfortunately hold shift down and do this with multiple buttons. We have to go one button at a time. So I've selected barbecue, I'm in data, and I'm going to the notes section, click on the drop down, and I wanna click on button user input. And next to that, where it says select user input, I want to create new. And I want students to take notes, so I'm going to label it as such, notes. I want their notes to be brief, so I want to keep single line text selected. However, if you were looking for a more detailed answer, you might choose multi-line text. I'm going to apply a hint. Because it's single line, I want to make sure students understand. Take brief notes only. I'm going to leave this unselected, and you need to decide whether it's required um, task for your data collectors to do. Do they need to take notes? If so, click the required button. If it's a case by case basis, leave that unselected, which will give them the option as to whether they wish to take notes or not. Once you're happy with that, click create. And you would have to go through that process for the other buttons that you choose to, um, to want to allow students to take notes um, of. Likewise, you can enable the photo and the notes um, abilities on your paths, fields, courts, and grassed areas, and that's up to you. Um, I like to keep it as simple as possible. Usually I only enable camera functions and notes function, uh, camera functions for, for the point um, data that I'm collecting as taking a photo of a car park or a playing field or a bike path might be a bit tricky when you're walking the circumference of that area or walking the line of the bike path, for instance. So I want to keep it simple and quick and easy to use for my students. Once you're happy with the changes you've made to the button layout, the button appearance, it's time to click save again to update those changes. And that might take a moment depending on how many changes you've made before clicking save. From here, simply go to share we're going to change the sharing um, visibility to your organization, which is your school. And before it allows us to, it's giving us a warning that the following items must also be shared at the same level, your organization. And this is our feature layer um, that we created before. So we're happy with that to be shared at an organizational level too. And we're going to click share. If you had a particular group as well, for instance, Mr. Smith's Year 7 Geography class, you could also click on the relevant group and it would take uh, it would share it to that group in particular. Now, at this point in time, you would also, if you had all of your students um, download Quick Capture onto their phones, you would also share the Quick Capture form via the QR code. And they would just simply have to have the uh, have the screen open, the Quick Capture app open, and facing the QR code, and it would prompt them to download this form onto their phone and onto that application so that they're ready to go out into the field and start collecting data. On your phone, open the Quick Capture app, press the plus icon, and select Scan QR Code. This will prompt a download giving you access to your data collection form for your data collectors to go out into the field. To add a point, click a button, take a photo if required, and add some notes if necessary. You can check the location of the point on the map in the top right corner briefly before it is submitted. Click send to send it off. To map line data, press a path to begin. 
the button will flash on and off. Map the path by traveling along it. This is the same process for polygons, except you would travel around the, the perimeter instead. Press the flashing button when finished mapping. You can check your line or polygon data by visiting the map view. Sometimes we can make mistakes when collecting data. If you click the wrong button, make an error, or are unhappy with the placement of data, you can click the bin icon on the bottom right of the screen to delete the data. Once you've finished collecting data on the Quick Capture application, you'll be able to view your data on the map you created in ArcGIS Online. If you reopen your ArcGIS Online map and zoom into the park you just collected the data at, you can actually see all of your data symbolized, according to the legend we set up earlier, in the map. Now, if you're unhappy with um, the placement of some of your data points, the great thing is you can actually edit them in ArcGIS Online too. By clicking on uh, one of the data points, you can click the Edit button, and that will allow you to enlarge or slightly reshape the area that you collected. Likewise with points, if I was unhappy with the placement of this water bubbler, I just need to click on it, and I can actually drag that to a new location. So it's really great that you can collect data in the field, but you can also edit the uh, location of that data if you come back and you notice that there was a bit of an inaccuracy with your GPS recording. Uh, that brings us to an end of the how to use Quick Capture. I hope that you found this tutorial useful and uh, I encourage you to check out some of our other tutorials on our skills page. Thank you.